All right, all right, all right. So this episode is a little bit different. I um, sat down with my friend, Mr. Daniel Donato, and um, I had a guitar lesson scheduled with him. That's something I've been doing over the last four months or so. Um, I started doing some guitar lessons with him, and he is a badass musician. Um, he's been doing this music thing since he was 14 years old. You know, he's been out busking on the streets of Nashville. Um, at 14, then landed a gig at Robert's Western World and, and has played hundreds of shows there. And uh, he's just a, a cosmic being and, and, a, and a joy to be around. So this was my first time to meet him in person. You know, these, these guitar lessons we've been doing um, via Zoom um, because I'm in Louisiana and he's in Nashville. So it was a pleasure to get to meet him in person. And um, like most of our lessons, it, it turned into a philosophical conversation. And so if anybody's looking to get lessons from Daniel Donato, don't judge it off of this. It's mainly my fault that we go down these rabbit holes. But it's, I, I learn something every time I, I meet with him, you know? And so this was no different. Um, then we do get into a little bit of guitar towards the end. Check this show out though. I think you guys will enjoy it. There's a lot of good conversation mixed in there. Um, he is a wealth of knowledge when it comes to the guitar. And uh, he's doing his thing. He has dedicated his life to music, and uh, it, it definitely shows. And I hope you enjoy this episode. Y'all check it out. And until next time, stay grateful. The Converse Cowboy Journey has given me an opportunity to sit down with some amazing performers from all walks of life. Where it is my job to tease out their habits and routines so that you can apply and test in your own life. I've learned, I've grown personally, I've been enlightened, and I've been humbled. Above all, I realize there is no destination in this life, no goal achieved or money made that can replace the feeling of flow and the pursuit of doing what you truly love to do. With a growth mindset, I'm constantly asking questions and pursuing knowledge. The Converse Cowboy is a platform that allows me to do just that. I'm excited and eager to share their stories with you all. I'm Mike Roberts, and this is The Converse Cowboy. Brought to you by Kerry Kelly Bits and Spurs, Schaefer Outfitter. Cool backpack, man. Tells a story. Yeah, I've had it for a little comp, while. A lot of comp books in there, huh? Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Holy hell. Are those all full or are you just like working on them? No, they're all full. I mean, not all full, but like I go through them and... So they have different just, meanings and different... Yes, yeah, so like this one's Instagram. This one's like for meditations, intention, visualization. This is the little song book I've been using for my little songwriting challenge. And then this one's just like all different like quotes that I may see. And, and that's not Instagram because that's what a lot of the Instagram content is. Yeah, no, like I'll go through here and look like I've written these things down over the years and um, I'll just go back through them and see which ones I, I like at that time, like wherever my headspace is. And that's the shit you see on Instagram. Yeah, dude. And then you got this guy. This is my journal. Black and red. No, I'm not sponsored by these people, but like. It's the pages are big. Whoa, look at that journal. Yeah, it's so cool. Pages are big and like, a, I don't know, those little comp books, it got a little too tight. So I, I can just kind of write out. Right, you let it fly. Yeah. 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 So yeah. That's brilliant. Peek into the backpack. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. I got to get on the composition grind. I'm on the memo pad. What like is that? The, like the vertical, uh -huh. like the paper flips over as opposed to horizontal. Yeah. So it's almost like more of a stream of conscious as opposed to going like change the page. So yeah, you just yeah, flip yeah. the page over the top. It's, I can just write and just go that way. I love I it. I don't know why, but you know, maybe that's a huge part of the process too, is like not trying to tell yourself what you should do, but like discover what you naturally do. Yeah, how did you find that though? Like that style, did, did somebody tell you that or did you just say? That concept? Yeah. Of writing that way or? Yeah, with that type of notebook, like the I got the idea know, from stuff. Jack Kerouac. Or, Okay. Because when he wrote On the Road, you know, he did it, it you can buy a se several versions of the book, but you can buy like the original script and it's like, um, he wrote it as one long piece of paper. So oh, it's not shit. like separate books, right? It's not separate chapters. I always like that idea yeah. of like, a, of one story that seems to have different phases and stages still being one collective thing. And so I kind of go about it oppositely, like in, where it's like, I don't even know if that's a word. And it's like- Oppositely, <laughs> it is now. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it's a mouth sound. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> oh. I like having everything in one book. So it's like, I had a meeting with my manager this morning and like that's in the same book as the set list that we wrote out in Denver for our midnight show on Saturday, which is in the same book as the song I wrote on Friday morning. 
So it's kind of just like chapters of consciousness. In theory, man, I would love to do that. I've got to ask though, how, how do you keep it organized? I review and I edit. Other than, so you just flip through and find them? Yeah, and I have different folders, I take them all out. So like whenever the book's done, it's usually way thin. Uh -huh. I never keep papers in there, I like to tear it out. Yeah. And like put it into folders. You keep like a to-do list in there too? I have a virtual to-do list. I read this book once called um, Getting Things Done by David Allen. I, I, I have heard of it. Yeah. I don't know if I have it. Well, my dad's very corporate, you know, it's like, and so he had this corporate retreat. And I think David Allen um, was a speaker or something like that. And he was like, you, you would like this book with how neurotic you are. And how organized you are. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's like, sure. And yeah. it turns out that David Allen was this, you know, very like well achieved, um, educated fellow who kind of had some psychedelic experiences in the 60s. Yeah. And it led to him wanting to develop this way to organize your thoughts and to organize uh, to do's. I'm writing it down. Yeah, man. And he's um, one of like the top corporate instructional speakers. Uh, he's like on the Robert Kiyosaki kind of level, except he's not a real estate guy. I got you. And uh, he has really detailed, quantified approaches on how to handle anything, how to process your consciousness, to have an inbox for your thoughts, how to store it into different folders, and how to get things done. So important. The, it's crucial. So important. It's like, how do you process all of this reality that's coming your way? It's like, well, you can't. Yeah. So you might as well surrender and find a way to process some of it. Yeah. If you don't, it just it's like this fucking fog that you're trying to navigate through, you know? Yeah. Which is why I admire what you do out. so well. It's like, because you run a business, then you do the Converse Cowboy, which is a business on its own. And it's like, the thing about business that I'm learning is that it's a constant um, maintenance on what what's the vision. Mm. And it's like, that's a lot of work. Yeah. And it's like, there's a lot of lefts and rights that come your way that you don't expect. It's like, how do you maintain all that and yeah. still grow as a person? It's like, yeah. It's amazing. Kind of, I don't know if the camera was rolling when we were talking about it, but it does. And that's something I've been thinking about a lot lately and, and have for a while is like finding the balance in that. And it comes up almost in every interview that I do, <laughs> the balance of like when to push, like really work hard and then like when to pull back and kind of reflect or just, just like working out. You know, you go in the gym, you bust your ass, you got to have time for those muscles to rebuild. You know, that's when the growth happens. And so do you work out? Yeah. You can't tell. <laughs> no. I uh, I started running a few years ago, so I try to run like three days a week. I got in with this badass running group back back home, and um, I have a little boxing gym set up at my house. So to say I work out would be a stretch, but I do go have some dumbbells and heavy bag and stuff right. like that. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When we're not traveling, I, I work out at home. I like I like YMCA, running. right? Yeah, the YMCA. Yeah, I don't like anything group oriented. I tried all those things. Oh, it, like the the 24 hours fitness? Or are you talking about like um, CrossFit? Like, like um, no, nah, CrossFit scares me. <laughs> I have too many friends that get hurt from CrossFit. Like it's yeah. too many friends that like I haven't, I'll go a year without seeing them. Yeah. And it's like, man, why are you walking like that? Yeah. <laughs> like, oh man, CrossFit. I tore my ACL. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like the only ACL I want to be tearing up is Austin City Limits. <laughs> <laughs> You know? When's that gonna happen? I don't know, but that's my vision. Yeah. That's my vision. That's what I want to do. It's just tour and play live. Yeah. I've, and I'm realizing that more so than ever. That's the thing about living here is like, you can kind of get into this dilemma. At least I found myself getting into it of like, what Daniel do I want to be? You know? And it's like, do I want to be a session guitarist? Do I want to try to write country songs? Do I want to be just a published songwriter and not ever try to do that? Do I play on Broadway? Do I play in people's bands? It's like, and when you're kind of, when you're talented at some of those things, it's like, it, it's like, what, which one do you pursue? And it's like the one that I'm seeing more so than ever that I really feel now, that I have a vision for, is to just tour and just play live. That's what I do. Yeah. That's you thrive in that environment, right? I really do. And I don't know why I do, which is interesting. It's like, why are we good at the things that we're naturally good at? It's like, and to say you're good at something is a stretch, but it's like, why do you thrive in certain environments? Well, I think you know. said it, though. It's natural. Like, you're not forcing this. I feel like you're somewhat of an extrovert, right? Like, oh, you yeah. thrive in, on stage. You thrive in front of a camera. Like, you don't have to force that. I'm more comfortable. Yeah, with, really. With, with more energy on me. Yeah. Than not. Yeah. It's like I, I can process other people's energy on me better than yeah. just no energy on me. And I don't know why that is. Um, but it's fascinating. Right. Yeah. And that's what COVID really was. I think in the most macro sense, the, the greatest blessing ever. Uh, 
the first performance I saw since like March of 2020 when that whole thing went down was a comedy show. Who it was wasn't it? a music show. Um, it was like Theo Vaughn. Oh, dude. I, By I far know. one of my favorite comedians. He's the best. <laughs> Louisiana like, guy. <laughs> yeah. Louisiana guy. He's on the weird side of Louisiana too. It's like <laughs> all these stories and whether they're true or not. I question it. He, he, he delivers everything he says the same way. And yeah. so I don't know, like, is this fabricated or not? And he delivers it in a way where I want to believe it, you know? Well, that's another thing I've been thinking about. It's like, does it, in the, in the, con, in the context of an entertaining environment, the only thing that really matters and that is real is the authenticity of your emotion. Yeah. It doesn't matter if the character of the song is you. Yeah. Like when Coulter Wall sings Big Iron, it, he didn't write it, but like he takes me there. You feel it, yeah. Yeah, it's like, it's the same thing with Theo. I think in some way, that's something I'm thinking about, but there was this thing Theo was improvising, which is my favorite thing to do. It's like improv, because like that is, it's the most, you surrender to the moment in the biggest way possible because you have to make it work. Have you ever done it? Like been on stage improv? With comedy? Yeah. No. no. You're saying you like to watch it. <laughs> well, I like to improvise on music. Okay, okay. Um, Because that's kind of my language. And yeah. His language is comedy, mm -hmm. you know. But I could tell, you could feel in this invisible manner when people, when he was on and when he wasn't on. And when, when the joke was working, when it wasn't. And it was so loud in terms of the emotion. It was like, oh, like, so consciousness is something, if you're open to it, it's like you can really feel it, especially in a room full of people. Yeah. And the only way I ever had that thought was to be forced to not go see a room full of people for like eight months, which was the first time I'd ever done that since I was 14. Right. So I'd been going to rooms full of people several times a week, you know, for like 12 years. <laughs> yeah. So it kind of numbs you to it. Yeah. But then all of a sudden I have this great muscle of being in, of knowing how to like feel in, in being in a room full of people that has to retire for eight months. And then like it gets to go back and you see it in a whole different way, man. Yeah. It's like renovating a house. It's like I, I had no idea that hardwood floors would make this room come alive in that way. Right. And that natural lighting was needed here. And it's like, it's crazy. Yeah. I love seeing these houses. My aunts, they uh, renovate houses, they buy and renovate houses. And um, they buy all these old like shitty houses. That is like are terrible and like poorly owned and like, and you look at the old construction. It's like there was no natural lighting. There was too many walls, and then <laughs> yeah, right. there's so, like all these. Everything was walls. a room. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like very linear. Yeah, and it's like they make it less linear, and they let natural light in. They let nature in, which is the ultimate symbol of what is not linear. Right. And it's like we love that as humans. Yeah. And it's brilliant to see, man. And it does. You walk in those houses, and it changes the feel, the whole vibe. Vibe is one of my favorite words because it's like a social contract for us saying that we don't know what something means, but it makes me feel something. And so here's a word that like says that. Well it, said. Like, <laughs> what is vibe? How you define vibe? It's like it's a vibration. It's probably it. in the same dictionary as oppositely. <laughs> <laughs> but it's in the same composition book. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. But going back, man, I think you add in like the natural, what you have, like that natural... Uh, personality with the talents of what you do on the guitar Thanks. and then that's magic on a, on a stage you know it can be yeah yeah, yeah it really can but um Theo was just here he played last week or this past weekend I think the Ryman yeah yeah I think he's taping a special really? the Netflix deal yeah yeah which is cool to see for sure yeah it's cool to see Netflix kind of be in the way that Spotify is and it's like revolutionizing um yeah the way that creators can communicate to their audiences, more of an independent manner. Yeah. Not a lot of people in the middle. Right. You know, it's like either you're really great or you're not. And if you're really great, you can talk to people in a large manner directly. Yeah. It's like, that's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, it could be magic. Theo is definitely magic. I try for, I aim for magic. There's something it. about it, man. And it's like, you have this natural ability, but you have been also playing and you were busking at 14 years old down on Broadway saying and I will use Theo since we're talking about him he started out I think doing the road rules thing and then just his personality carried him through and he stuck with this comedy thing for a long time and so anybody that you see with a Netflix special or doing what you're doing like they've done that thing for a long time we don't see those years that took them to get to where they're at now isn't that so true I bet you can see it in yourself too now that you're looking back and you're pursuing this 
um, Converse Cowboys. I think we can always do it. You know, you look back six months and you're like, God, I was a fucking idiot. You know, like, <sighs> how stupid was I? Or, you, you can look at it any time you can look back, I feel like, and say that, you know. But, yeah, we are seeing some growth, and it is it's cool to have that awareness, you know, that, and play for the long game. Because I think so many people get wrapped up, in, and I know I'm guilty of this, like getting right. caught up in the microwave society of instant gratification and microwave. wanting to have it wanting it to happen right now, like this fucking guitar. Yeah. And when I do these lessons with you, <laughs> I want to see it happen faster. I want to play like Daniel Donato, and it's like, wow. oh, slow down, dude. Like, you haven't put anywhere near the time. So, like, these are the conversations that I'm having with this, or like, I want to learn Spanish. I take jujitsu. Like, I do a number of different you things. You did jujitsu? I just started a few months ago, yeah. How is that going? It's good. It's really good. Um, I go around noon. I, you know, it's a noon class for about an hour, and it breaks yeah. up my day. And right, so it's you a work good, good in the group. morning, and then you do jiu-jitsu in the afternoon, and then you go back to work. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah, I usually start like I said. I run in the mornings, early in like around five, and then you run at five. Yeah. So you wake up at three thirty. Still. Yeah. That's fucking insane. What time do you go to bed? Ah, uh, like 9-ish, 9.30-ish. So you woke up at 3.30 today? Not today, no. Because you're And I was just about to say that. It's not every day. Like, that schedule changes. Like, if I'm at home, no shows going on. Like, I'm getting up around that time. That's insane. It's crazy. 3.30? But it works for me, you know? Like, I don't... I get my hours. I, you know, I get my sleep. Seven, eight hours, something yeah. like that. Whatever, you just go to bed whatever early. Whatever that math comes to, huh? Yeah. You just go to bed early. What do you... That's the thing I'm trying to figure out, is I like rising early, but it's also like... I also like the nighttime. So what is it that you find more valuable in the morning than you do in the evening? That's a good question. It's like nobody's, nobody, not nobody, but very few people are up at that time that can fuck with me. And you know, it's right. like my phone goes in, do not disturb when I go to sleep. And so then I get up and I'll do the coffee thing and, and then I'll either, me it's a combination, write, meditate, or read something. Mm. It's kind of like my time, my me time, you know, yeah. for whatever that is, an hour before I go run, and it just kind of sets my day, you know, and I don't even think about it now, like, it's just part of my routine, but oh. I can tell the days I don't do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. kind of throws that, that routine off, but, so then, that goes back to that balance of, like, being this strict and organized and disciplined, and then also kind of, like, letting go, like, we're here, on, we're here in Nashville this week, like, I kind of let my routine go out the window, somewhat. It's hard for me to let go of that and just kind of surrender, but I think it's good to do it at times. Yeah, absolutely. So I think that's a skill in itself, is being able to thrive in chaotic environments as opposed to orderly environments. Well, yeah, like the, the majority of life is out of our control, right? So like, yeah. I think that's why I do the meditations, why I do the journaling, why I get my mind in a, 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 still, a, a still state to be able to handle that stuff and not overreact and be able to process it. Right. That's be able to breathe noticed. through it, you know? Whoa. Right? Yeah, man, absolutely. It's like, that's the funniest thing to me that I'm, I'm starting to see is like we try to quantify all of these goals and plans into linear constructs. Mm -hmm. But like the very vehicle that life is, is non-linear in essence. No, it's, it's fucking... It's all this, curves. And, yeah. like, and if you look at nature, look at the weather. It's like no week is ever the same. No plant ever grows the same. No tree is perfectly straight. Like nothing is linear. Mm -hmm. Yet like we make houses that are linear. We make roads that are fucking lines. Yeah. And it's like it's a very interesting retaliation against nature. Yeah. And it's like, so I'm, I'm realizing that there's all this like almost training that I've been taught, which is to try to like, uh, through school and just through talking to people and the way that they've been trained. And it's like to think in linear fashions and try right. to make linear goals. Mm -hmm. And it's like, don't stop there. Have room for nonlinear shit as well. <laughs> yeah. And nonlinear goals. Cause that's obviously a force that you're reckoning with almost more than linear force. It's like linear force is like, go the speed limit. Okay. But a nonlinear force is like, there's a tornado that's coming and you have yeah. to run. <laughs> yeah, it's like a whole different thing. Yeah, we, we try to put like these finite rules, like a, yeah. in, in a baseball game, there's finite rules, there's going to be an end. Like we try to put that in the game of life and it doesn't work. Like this game is infinite. That's you why can it's go a wherever game. you want to go. Yeah. Because games start and end in a linear way. And it's like we love the shit that's in between. It's like what Alan Watts talks about. It's like the perfect game is the game where you don't know the outcome and skill matters. Mm -hmm. and it's like that's why tic-tac-toe gets boring 
Because like if I know how to beat you in tic-tac-toe, I'll just set it up from the intro and just beat you. Yeah. And it's like, well, that's not a fun game. You only want to do that three times. But like baseball, skill matters. Yeah. But also, so does chance. Mm-hmm. And that's a nonlinear variable. Right. And it's like we love that subconsciously because I think we know that that's kind of how life really is. Yeah. And it's like maybe us are kind of running away from that fact in some way. Yeah. So, you know, that's that's a whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> I agree, man. And that that's one of those, one of the many things that I just ponder and think about. And, and well, What do you do to, the thing that I'm wondering is like how do you, what do you do to think? Do you sit down and think? Are you asking? Do you write and think? Like for me? Yeah. I thought you were going Alan Watts, like where do thoughts come from? Oh, well. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, like I just explore my mind. Now I'll sit down with a, a journal. You, you know? write. Yeah, I'll write. And once upon a time, like I would judge everything that I would write down. It's like I didn't want to expose what was going on in my brain. Right. Um, but then I read a book by Julia Cameron called mm. The Artist Way. Okay, I'll read it that. It talks about morning pages and just writing three pages in the morning. And uh, Three? Yeah. Isn't that funny? You ever noticed the, the symbolic value of three and how often that happens? I think about it. Like, what is Nikola Tesla's deal? Three, three six, six, nine. nine yeah. yeah. I think about it a lot. I haven't researched it all that much. But, um, so yeah, I mean, I guess to answer your question, I'll write. I meditate. And meditate, that word gets thrown around a lot. Mm-hmm. And I, I should probably clarify, like, what I do. Like, there's, cert- there's different ones that I do. I, I meditate for, like, affirmations. Like, I'll visualize essentially like become the director of my life the things I want to do with the uh, the awareness that I have today what I think is best for me I'll meditate on those things and really think about those things and it quietens the negative chatter quietens the ego which in so you're humbly admitting that you do have that negative chatter fuck I think everybody does. well everyone does when everyone says it yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like why not yeah. yeah exactly and so then there's some other meditations like I'll just like transcendental or like just focusing on one thing or focusing on my breath to quiet my mind to not let not focus on anything and the thoughts are still coming like this thing we can't shut it off we can maybe try to slow it down or become more aware of those thoughts and I acknowledge them and then I dismiss them and I'll go back to my breath so there's a few like if anybody's wondering like Headspace is a good app Calm is a good app oh yeah uh, Sam Harris I don't know if you listen to him very I do much. Like him. I just started listening to some of his um, guided meditations. Really good. Really? Okay. Really good stuff. I'll, I'll dig into him. Yeah. I've Are only, you doing any of that? I do Wim Hof. Yeah. We were yeah. talking about him earlier. <laughs> he's weird. He's weird, but man, he's dialed in. He's <laughs> dialed into breath work for he's sure. He's dialed in. Yeah. That's a funny thing. It's like, I feel like as a human, like he did a good job because it's like, as a human, you should like, you have like a skill that's like very narrow and you're good at that thing. Yeah. And then like, on your way to being so good at that thing, you become such a weird individual, which is nonlinear. Like, Why do you think that is, though? I don't know. Why do we specialize? Well, like, well it's like anybody that's super good at, at like one thing. They're weird. They are different. Let me rephrase that. They're different than like the normalcy of society. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. So it's like you have to sac. I don't even know if I would say sacrifice. They're. I guess it's a blessing. Like they're genuinely being who they are, and society deems that as different or not normal. Right. Yeah. The thing that I find weird too is society allows you to kind of be a lackluster person in some ways, if you contribute in other facets that they say are achievable. Like a lot of musicians that I've interacted with that have you know like large tiers of success, their you know their kids don't have the best things to say about them. Mm Because they miss birthdays and they, yeah, yeah, you know, or or things like that. And it's like, well, that's interesting. So society will kind of like, you know, on like the hero's journey level, give you virtue. But then it's like, you also could be a lackluster person in some ways. It's like, that's an interesting thing too. Like, I wonder why that happens. Yeah. Kind of answering that question with a question. I don't know. You know. So you sit down, you write three pages, and you don't judge what comes out of your mind. You've achieved a lot, and so what is it that you do to like um, maintain a vision for things that you want to keep achieving? Do you revisit the vision that you have for what success looks like down the road? Yeah, so I don't, to say I achieved a lot, I think would be a stretch. I guess that's a relative statement. I would say in my in my realm of what I my like you know 
moral hierarchy of what achievement would be, I would say you definitely achieved a lot. Yeah, well, I appreciate yeah. that. It's a constant like search because I never feel like it's enough. Of course, well, that never very thing like I enough. think is like the thing that makes you achieve. Yeah, it's like. But for a for a long time, it was detrimental because I I, I would it was a lot of self judgment involved with that. There was ego involved with that. Like I wasn't grateful because I felt like if I was grateful, I couldn't I couldn't be grateful because then that meant I was being complacent. Like I couldn't get better. You know, mm -hmm. I couldn't let my mind go there. But then you see that you can be grateful and achieve simultaneously. Yeah. Yeah, and so gratitude, I've said it before, is a fucking superpower. When you can truly tap into it and feel it. Wow. It really is, man. It, like, it makes the worries go away. It makes the... Attach I think that's what it is, like the attachments. Um, I think it's okay to have expectations. It's okay to, to journal about this stuff and meditate about what I want, but to, to release any attachment to it. You've read a book, Awareness. Oh, yeah. And I read the book that you sent me, too. Um, the Way to Love, Anthony DeMeo. Great book, yeah. Small little book. Small book, but it's packed full of... That's the Sweet, greatest so one. you read it. I love it, yeah. I thought I told you. I guess I did it, sorry. Yeah, but no, <laughs> that's one that I go... And so to, that's another thing, like, to answer your question. I'll go back to those books, and I don't have any with me today. They're at the Airbnb, but like they're tabbed out. And that I like to read the book, and I do listen to books too, but I like that so I can go back and look at oh, and highlight. You tab it. I got to do that. Yeah. So you can go back and see what page has yeah. that gold. Yeah. Yeah. And so when I realized that, and it's still, again, this is a practice. Like there is no destination that, that's the other thing that I realized. There is no destination that I'm going to get to where all of these th boxes are checked and then that equals happy. There's no formula for that. Right. And so it's like, okay, this thing is a practice. It allows the self judgments to go away, it allows me to realize, okay, I'm going to fuck up, it's going to happen. Try to minimize it. Try to minimize the failures. Try to minimize the fuck ups. And I don't know. I just feel like the journal is a guide to keep me on track, to keep me aware of what where my thoughts are and and what's important to me. What do I value? Right. What so are my intentions? That's the other thing. To know my truly know my intentions. What do you mean by that? So like, what? Know my why? Like, why am I doing this? Am I doing this for more follows? Am I doing this for money? For a long time, that was it. Money was my answer. And I made money, and I still had this empty feeling inside. I thought I needed to get married, got married. Empty feeling inside. Like I was attached to an identity. I was attached to the idea of this life of success. And I'm putting it in quotes because that's what we are taught through social conditioning, you know, from an early age. So it's I get very long winded with that answer, but. I guess it's the environment for it. Yeah. It's like, so. Yeah, knowing your why, you can traverse any how. Mm. And so it's like you familiarize yeah, yourself. Yeah, the how kind of takes care of itself, and that sounds, that's a very broad stroke, but it yeah. kind of When you know sense. your why. Yeah. So you revisit your why often. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. That's the thing you got to do. Yeah. I'm flabbergasted by how many people that I think are successful um, journal. Well, what are you doing, dude? No, yeah. I mean, what are you? I'm going to ask you the same questions oh, now. Because you're doing the damn deal. I mean, you're one of the biggest names in Nashville right now. So, like, what? I don't know about that. You know, but, yeah, there's, it's fun, man. I try to have fun all the time. That's my biggest thing right now. Oh, man, I saw a quote you said the other day. When, you have, when you're having fun, it just sounds better. Yeah. I said that with, for Fender. That was fun. And that was our most fun show we've had in a while. We filmed this video um, for Fender which is one, my main sponsor uh, for guitars. And um, that was before our first show in Austin. And we like sold out that show that night. And it was like unreal. And the thing I'm re learning too is like when we say the word unreal, it actually means super real. <laughs> it actually means it's so real that it kind of breaks the box of what we think real is and the box of getting bigger. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the thing that you, you speak with people who have like, you know, sold out. Um, something that I would deem as a real goal would be like sell it to Ryman. And it's like, um, when I speak with my friends who have done that, it's like, to them, it's just like a shoe that fits. But to me, it's like the four year old wearing their dad's loafers and you're walking around looking all funny. It's like, I can't imagine fitting into those shoes. And then later down the line, you do, and it becomes just another pair of shoes. Right. But when you put them on at first, it's like super real. Like it doesn't fit your comprehension of what real is. Yeah. So what I'm trying to do is expand what is normal to me. 
and the things uh-huh. that initially are hard, like playing guitar, become normal because you satiate and you hedonically like adapt to things, like through a sensory way and then maybe also like in a nervous system way. Like I can, you know, like I remember when I first played, when I first heard country guitar, there was the uh, <laughs> trying all night trying to play that and I couldn't and I tried the next day and I couldn't and now like 12 years later I can kind of take that and I can also like do something with it just improvise like Here. No, You're but it's Jesus like I can just Christ. let it flow. I know. And I, it's like it's really cool because it's like so like years ago I couldn't do that. And then through vision and action and life taking care of how many X years that it should be, I can now do it. And it's like the shit that gets in the way is your expectation of how long it should be mm-hmm. or like mm-hmm. how long you think it should be. But it's like you don't know anything. So why would you say you should tell life where it should go? Yeah. Which is very linear. <laughs> yeah, that is your reality. The stories and narrative that we tell ourselves or can put limitations on what we're really capable of doing. I know. Or it can stretch us, you know? Whoa, that's heavy. Right? Yeah, it's very cool. <laughs> it's very cool. Do you listen to any Joe Dispenza? Dr. Joe Dispenza? No. He's got some good stuff on that. I'll, I have a book in my car, actually, I'll give to you. Really? Yeah, oh, it's called man. You Are the Placebo. Okay, I would love that. Yeah. I, I, There's a reason why every drug company out there tests their new drug against a placebo. Mm. There's no therapeutic effects in these drugs, the placebos. It's a sugar pill, yeah. yet they're having therapeutic effects. I may have said that wrong. There's nothing effective about a placebo. It's what? a sugar pill. But they're having therapeutic effects because of what's going on in somebody's mind. They believe that this new drug the doctor told them about is going to heal them in some way. It's the power of belief and intention. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And how that kind of can mask your consciousness and awareness of things. That's a freaky one, man. Yeah. That's a weird one. A lot of people, uh, a lot of people in my life, several people in my family had problems with um, with prescription drugs. And um, they've all recovered. And it's interesting to see their approach to what allows them to believe makes them healthy and what allows them to move forward in life with confidence. You know, and it's like, these are the people that I know that are kind of really dependent on these external sources. And I'm realizing it's like, we kind of get conditioned in some way to think that like the external world and finding satiation in that is actually the thing that makes us happy, Mm -hmm. but it's, or healthy, or able to integrate and go through life. But it's really like the shit and the work that you do on the inside. 100%. Yeah. 100% 100% agree. Like if that, you have, that, that book, The Mastery of Love, is all about that, you know? Yeah, man, that book's heavy. Did I say that right? Oh, uh, The Pathway to Love. The Way to Love. The Way to Love. Mastery of Love is by Don Miguel Ruiz. Different guy. Similar, similar concept. But yeah, The Way to Love. It, 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 happiness, it does. It comes from within. Mm. Yeah. It's a real one, man. And I, it's that's, so cheesy to say. A lot of, uh, you know, a lot of that stuff it sounds cheesy but it's so true and it's one of those things not many people talk about i think i've been thinking about cliches a lot Mm -hmm. because it's like um i've been talking to a lot of people fortunately you and i've made a lot of friends this year of people i really do admire um through giving guitar lessons like hundreds this year already and it's like the thing that's interesting um is like there's a lot of cliches in guitar, and then there's a lot of cliches in music. And like we talk about this all the time. Like if you're like on, you know, like even like a Ramblin' Fever and like Whiskey River, or like all these songs, they all have like the same three chords. It's like, okay, maybe those are a little bit cliche at this point. Mm. And then you go and try to change those and the songs aren't as good. And so then it's like, why do we have cliche chords? And it's like, why do we have cliche truths mm-hmm. and sayings? And it's like, why do the more complex things or maybe the things that aren't as based in a truthful sentiment 
They don't stand the test of time. And then I have this idea where it's like, maybe the most truthful, simple, salient ideas are the ones that truly stand the test of time because those are the only things that have the power to defeat time. Mm-hmm. Well said. Like the converse. Right. Like the Nike, like owned by Nike, it's like the Nike space hippie. No one knows what that shoe is in comparison to the converse Chuck Taylor. Yeah. Or like the most popular Air Jordan is the Jordan 1, not the right. Jordan 13, <laughs> which is one of Mike Jordan's favorite shoes. It's like, why? It's like, well, the Jordan 1's pretty fucking simple. It yeah. looks kind of just like a converse in some way. Yeah. And it's like, so these simple things can like stand the test of time. It's like, I love cliches for that very reason. Because they stood the test of time. Right. And those are my favorite things. Because yeah. that's all we want to do with music or our career is to stand the test of time. Yeah. At least me. I agree. Well, teach me some simple cliche stuff. Yeah. That I can make sound cool. I think the... I, th I just love the wildwood flower. You know, that whole key of C thing. You know, C being the key with no sharps or flats. goes to the stuff we've been working on too where it's like you do those walk-ups mm -hmm. probably is easy for most everybody else. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. You, you're hitting on things like that in your songwriting work that you've been doing a lot, though. I've been watching those. Yeah. yeah. Well, the lessons have definitely helped. Um, and I was hoping, yeah, we could you could help me half-ass write a melody for this week's song, because I haven't been working on it at what all with these honor. interviews. So, yeah. I'd love what to. What do you think? You know, yeah. Work? Okay. <laughs> that's ambitious. Yeah. That's cool. That's the way I live, man. <laughs> I can tell. I can tell. That's the way I want to live, too. Yeah. 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 It takes effort and awareness to live ambitiously. Because if, if you don't observe yourself, you won't be ambitious. Yeah. So, yeah. Totally. Cool. What's the melody? Or what's that's the what I'm lyrics? telling you, dude. I, I, yeah, that's what I need you for. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I haven't even started. Like, I've been taking notes, and I'll hear something just lyrically like, that I like or buzzwords and I'll write it in my phone but no I haven't even really picked up my guitar this week just that's all right because we're flow we're running back and forth and again that's an excuse but it's not is it like like I probably could have picked it up if I had been focused on it but I just didn't so yeah I have more though in the recent weeks and months since I started lessons with you than I have in the past so that's why I love the non-creative practice Talk about that, man. I, I love for people to hear that. Yeah. When I first heard it, it was like a light bulb went off for me. Really? Creative versus non-creative work, yeah. I love the yin and yang delineations. Yeah. Like you have linear and non-linear. Yeah. Right? You have uh, you have so many. You have unreal amounts. Um, I just think non-creative practice is the way that, like you hear about athletes getting their work in. Like, oh, I just had to get my work in this morning. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, that I like that idea. But then you get that into the creative realm and it's like, that's hard to do. And it's like, because what you, you think of a creative person, it's like the Hunter S. Thompson, or it's like the Bukowski, or it's like, I got to sit at this fucking typewriter till 5 a.m. and like yeah. work seven hours and there's papers flying everywhere. It's like, <laughs> sure, that's creative. Um, but there's a lot of non creative work that you can do that's just like working out. And you can do that every day, just mm -hmm. like you work out every day. Um, and I love that. And that really helps me calm myself and feel less anxious about where I'm at. Um, I'm curious to know, not to cut you off, so please. like you told me that non-creative stuff is like running scales. When you're at Daniel Donato's level, what does non-creative work look like? Man, you change the oil in a Ferrari and you change the oil in a freaking Volkswagen Beetle, don't you? And it's like, it's the same thing. I still run scales. Um, and you know, I still, the thing that I'm really aware of right now is um, trying to not be so um, dynamically rough when I'm playing live. And the only way I get there is because there's so much testosterone. It's like all this like chemicals happening in your brain. You end up playing harder. Mm. And I just want to be aware of that. I don't want to not do that because I want to do that. I also want to not you do, do it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like so the, 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 my, when I was, my sister, before she could drive, 
we'd go to Kroger and it'd be like, okay, step on the brakes. Right. You know, and it's that thing. And so it's the same thing when you play live a lot of the time. Is you step on the brakes too hard, or you step on the gas too hard. And really, you just want to be a Tesla. You just want to zoom and go. <laughs> It'd be brilliant, you know. It's like, that's really the goal. Yeah. Um, so that's something I, you know, I'm young, I'm 26. And so it's like, I can play way too hard and put way too much out and not have enough at the end of it all. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to work on that. And so non-creative practice that I do now is um, I'll take like a G scale. Like G major. And I'll just run it at intervals. And I'll do it slow. Do it soft. And then do it fast. And now I'll go even, you need to go hard. Well, another one that I do uh, right now is I just do these simple. to get my hands and my mind correlated you know stop processing so many thoughts up here and focus your thoughts on this hand and what it's doing uh-huh. and it's like that's quite the task to ask of yourself it's like sit down and be like i'm going to stop thinking about everything else and try to focus on just what this hand is doing right that's a wild thing to ask of yourself so it's like warm yourself up into that train of thought right so those are the two main ones that right i do on. right now i'm constantly for how long like how long will you sit down and do that well before i showed you for like 10 minutes yeah, and when I'm home, I do it for like 15. It's not a lot, too. Mm-hmm. Like, that's the thing. It's like just doing something for 15 minutes a day is really effective because it compounds over time. Right. You know, like that um, like open loop learning. It's like um, you get an immediate result right the second that you do it. Right? Either if I'm trying to hit this scale and I say I mess up and I have. And it's like, okay, I immediately know mm-hmm. that, I, that I need to, like, change that. Whereas, like, other forms of learning, it might take a second. So like you might take a whole day to get your results back and see mm. if, I, if I was doing this the right way or not. Um, this to me is like so fun because I can see immediately on the spot if my technique is there or not. Right. You know, I know I remember something we were talking about for non-creative, which is just run through a chord. And just make sure every note is heard. Audible. Where did you go back to? D. Yeah. Why does it sound so much prettier when you do it? <laughs> I don't know. I wish I knew. <laughs> I think that sounds pretty too. That's the thing is I love hearing other people play. You know, pretty is subjective, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it sounds pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Beauty is in the eyes of the picker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man, it's like, that sounded really good. I think maybe what I could say would be, you know, my right hand might have a little bit different of a dynamic control. I can decide to go harder or not. Uh, you know, it's yeah. like, that, again, that's nonlinear. Right. get solemn uh-huh. it's like those little those little heart palpitations right there are like very interesting yeah to be able to do those on the spot it's fun mm-hmm. and that's something you know I, I think we've have talked about that in the past of you just running through the chord progression of a song you're working on oh yeah and just like yeah, work, yeah. And working on those walk-ups <laughs> That is one thing I'd like to get better at, because it does add another dynamic, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's a cool one. That's kind of a Willie Nelson style one. No bum, open string either, just just oh. two. Bum, bum, boom, boom. Yeah. Where are you going right into the D though? Mm-hmm. I kind of go. That on the A 
string. That's on the D string. string. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. And how do you get back up? You could even go like D and then like three to C. Mm, yeah. They're so much easier in person. <laughs> We've been doing these over Zoom and it's a little bit hard. <laughs> Brilliant. That's really it. God damn it. <laughs> I didn't realize how short we were on time or I wouldn't have. That was a little ambitious to ask to help you, have you helped me write a melody. <laughs> it might be. Minutes. Songs would be written pretty fast. <laughs> <laughs> on the um, road again was written in about 20 minutes. What was? On the road again. Really? Yeah, you wrote it on a napkin. On, a, on, on an airplane, plane. right? Yeah, yeah, I think I read that somewhere. <laughs> you just, just wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> so that's uh, it's like most of those songs that I've been writing as shitty as they are they, they stay with the same like G uh, C G F C F G C A minor whatever right E minor yeah right nothing wrong with that some of those can you give me get, what, what, if you came up with something off the top of your dome right now what do you got there's two chords I love that are really fun um, that fit in G and every key can kind of be like this and it's like I said six I, minutes, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I can't <laughs> learn that. <laughs> it's like, um, I, this one's fun. It's literally just B7. Da, da, da. Yeah. It's like two, one, two. Is that it? Oh. Yeah. And if you wanted, you could have pinky on two on the high E string. Yeah, that's so fun. So it's like... What is that? So C, that's C a sharp? C minor. C minor, sorry. So that's known, you know, in we're in Nashville, in the Nashville number system, that would be called a four minor. Okay. Um, because C is your four, right? You have G, A, B, C, mm -hmm. right? That's linear. Um, and then it's like you have a C major, and then you have C minor. So four minor. And it's like such a brilliant chord. It, it evokes such an emotion. So what you're losing me. So the number system, I thought like two, six, and s I thought two, like two, three, and six were the minors. Correct. Okay. Right, but then nature happens. <laughs> and then it's like <laughs> you can modify. linear. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so a four minor. You can also minor the four. Yeah. Okay. And so that's a, it's a cool sound. Um, Dixieland Delight. You know, it's like, that's a country song. I'm just somebody that uses four minor. That's mm -hmm. the way love goes, Merle Haggard. Um, love Sick Blues. Yeah. Is that how you walked it down? That's a three major. Right, because that's a B major. Uh -huh. It's G, A, B. Usually three is minor. Right. Yeah. So there's these nonlinear um, exceptions, caveats to the rules. Huh. Which, if you know how to use them, right, creates a great dish. So I'd say B major, and then I'd say C minor, right. And if you want to make those more macro and applicable to any key, it would be three major and four minor. What do you mean? Yeah. So it's like if you weren't in G. Oh, so, I see. I see. I see. Right. Yeah. To say I was in C. Mm -hmm. So like my three and C is C D E. Mm -hmm. So I would do an E major, and then my four would be an F minor. And it's like those sound cool. Yeah. You know? I dig that. Me too. That's in G. Yeah. So it's C. Oh, it's in C. Yeah. To E major. To, to F. F minor. 
Yeah, to C. To G. Back to C. Why are you playing that C like that, though? You know, I've just been doing it for so damn long, I decided I'd throw the G in there. <laughs> After a while. <laughs> so that's how you'll play a C every time, then? I don't know if it's as linear as every time. Um, that's a funny thing, too. It's like I don't know why my hand does things that it does, you know? Well, you kind of, I would have to think, like, you develop some form of intuition. And, like, you just feel it and hear it and... Yeah, and you happens. trust it? You trust it. Isn't that weird? That is. It's really odd to me. The yeah. whole thing, the more I play guitar, the more weird it gets. Yeah. It's weird. It's like a weird thing. It doesn't make sense to me. It's like a part of my body that I put in a case and like carry somewhere. And it's like I pick it up and I do things with it, but I don't really know why I do the things I do on it. And they're like, it evokes emotion. And it's, yeah. it's really a strange thing. It's very cool to have, though. It is cool. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> that you can do that thing. Yeah, yeah. it's fun. Yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. Again, fun. So you asked what I was doing. It's like I'm just really trying to have as much fun as I can in a way that's in alignment with my vision. How do you separate that from the business, though? Like the business side business of it? Is does fun. it even it does it even get in the way? Does that even cross your mind? Oh, totally. Yeah, all the time. A little too much. That's why I love my manager. Mm. It's like I can get way too macro-managerial, micro-managerial. Mm -hmm. it's a, to the point of where it's not good. It's stupid. Like, don't be doing that. You yeah. don't got to worry about all those things. Yeah, yeah, know? yeah. Um, so but I, 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 that just comes from awareness of myself. I love the business end of it. I love working on um, what's the rollout plan for marketing and like what is the merchandise going to look like? Like, right. you know, what do we want the venue to say when they advertise the show and what are the hashtags? And I think that's all an extension of caring about the music to some degree. Yeah. You know? That's what I think so cool about you, man. You're doing the whole damn thing. You're, you've got the social media down. You've got the guitar, like the main part. You've got That's that down. Part. You've got the personality. So you're doing the thing, man. Thanks, man. That means you're, a lot coming from you. You're doing the thing, and they're doing all of the things. And uh, it's, it is. It's inspiring to, to see what you're, you're doing now and where you're potentially going to be at. So that means I'm glad that I get to spend an hour with you every few weeks you know I wish we could do this in person more often I'd love that yeah. which may happen because we're gonna hopefully be coming back and interviewing more musicians and, and you're gonna get a place up here right for it I'd like to yeah thank you for manifesting that for me there you go <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I don't see why I wouldn't man I, uh, this is um, I've been in Nashville before but this is really the first time I've spent time in Nashville and I just dig it I dig the vibe mm -hmm. <laughs> dig the vibe of Nashville there's a lot of vibe especially in this building yeah. A lot of vibe here, man. Yeah, these folks here, I'll, I'll give them a shout out. Sound Emporium, they've been great. Unreal. They've been great. Yeah. So thank you for the recommendation. Yeah, brother. This was so fun. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. It's a real honor. You bet, brother. Thank you, man. I'm sure it'll be the first of many. I would love that. Yeah. Cool. Sweet, man. I'm sorry we weren't able to get on any more like melodic construction. What was that? I do like that little chord progression. C? Though. C. To E major. Uh, to, to, to F. To F minor. And if you want to write that, you can just write F with like a little M next to it. Yeah. Lowercase M, rather. When I go C, G, C. Oh, and so after that F minor, you go back to the C. I do, I go G, back to C. the one. Yeah. So, Daniel, tell me what you got coming up, my friend. Uh, there's a new record called uh, Cosmic Country and Western Songs. And it's... Um, a collection of songs I used to play down at Roberts when I was playing there all those years. Right on. And kind of uh, revamped. Sweet. For the new thing. When will that be out? Um, at the end of September. Yes. End of September. Yeah, this will definitely be out by then. Cool. Yeah. Working for September 24th, but it's like moving dates around. Right on, man. So, yeah. I look forward to hearing it. Thank you, man. There's just one tune from it. Um... Long. 
Still scratching at my door Oh Lord, can't you hear that lonesome wind moan? And tell me, baby, why have I gone so long? Song. And let the past paint pictures in my head I'll kill it with the thunderbird and try to write a sad, sad song And tell me, baby, why have I gone so long? Tell me, baby, why have I gone so long? You've been gone so long Tell me, baby, why have I gone so long? Steam coming off of that thing, man. <laughs> nice. Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thanks for playing one. My pleasure. Thanks My pleasure. Playing one. Yeah, brother. Appreciate My pleasure. It. Thanks for having me. Man. Converse Cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> this is real. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Thank you, bro. I just sit there and I couldn't quit smiling. I'm just fucking smiling. In appreciation of what you do, your talents. Thank you, man. Yeah. Man. Thank you.